don't worry, this video isn't about uh, Orange Pi 3. It's about a fan and a transistor circuit and a hell of a transistor. The fan for this runs pretty fine from 5 volts. 5 volts, machine turns on, everything's good. There's a 5 volt rail right here. There's also a 3.3 rail on the other side, and the fan also runs well from 3.3. But when I plug in one of the other GPIOs and turn it on, nothing happens. Using the GPIO program, we can read all of the pins for the OPI3B. And I think I'll use pin number six here, which is conveniently located next to ground. So I have split those leads up and plug that in. And then all we need to do is to say we want the mode for pin number six to be out. And then we want it to write uh, a, to pin number six, a one. Uh, oh, did you see that move? So it's just a very slight movement there, but it's not enough, it seems, to be able to actually spin it. Hmm. So what we need is some sort of transistor-based switch to fix that up. Let's have a look at how that might be done. So what I designed was this circuit here. So the Orange Pi 3B GPIO pins can't seem to drive the fan, not sure why. Possibly though, we can solve this with a MOSFET, switching the five volt rail. Uh, and if we use an N-channel MOSFET, we can have five volts coming in, let's say through the fan or whatever else we're trying to activate, and then into drain, the gate is connected to the GPIO via a 1K uh, resistor and then down to ground. So this is pulled down so the gate is low until it isn't. And, uh, and finally source out to ground. So that is the plan. Why choose a MOSFET? Well, I'm thinking that some of these devices now, like maybe like the ESP8266 or the ESP32 or the old Orange Pi, have got 3.3 volts or perhaps less. I've noticed that some of the uh, chips and some of the circuits coming out can even go down to 1.82 volts. And I've certainly got some that are like that. So I'm looking for something which is voltage driven and uh, has a low power loss. To fit inside the Orange Pi case or just to fit in anywhere, I thought I'd try an SMD one. And before I've used a BS170, or a 2N, oh, there's a, uh, a zero missing, a 2N, let me just get my pen, 7000. These are pretty similar MOSFETs, really, and uh, they uh, they have the same uh, pinout and same form factor. Uh, the BS, well, I think both of these are actually available in TO92, but they're certainly available in SOT23 as well. But then I came across the AO3400, and um, it's got crazy stats. So apparently it can stand 30 volts and I think actually 5.8 amps. I mean, surely not. Tiny little legs. I've actually got one here. Let's have a look at it. Um, really? 5.8 volts through that. Um, I suppose one of the things we could do is to test to see whether it's a MOSFET at all. So let's do that. Here's our handy dandy tester. And I think if we go like this and press down and ask it, what is this? Hopefully, yep, it says it's a MOSFET, all right. Uh, and uh, look at that, 1.1 volts. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, gate is one, uh, source is three, and drain is two. All right, so but I'm still freaked out by the size of it. Whether I'll be able to solder it up or not, I don't know. Um, so yeah, logic level, so with a threshold uh, gate to source voltage of 1.1 volts or even lower. Uh, so what I might do is set up a voltage divider and actually test it out, see if we can switch this on with, yeah, 1.1 1. You know, 1 .1 to 1.5 or something like that. The, uh, the pinout is, uh, is the same as what I'm familiar with, the BS170 or the 2N7000, uh, and there it is in a SOT23 format. Now, just for uh, fun, I thought I'd actually maybe try and build it on one of these SOP8 to DIP8 adapters. Uh, so it certainly fits on there. 
Uh, and so the circuit I've designed goes like this. Uh, you can see here, this is where, let me see if I can rotate this around so it's in the same spot. Uh, so you can, is it in the same spot? There we go, that's better. Uh, so that little triangle there uh, is where your pin one of your chip would be. But then if you rotate this around, it actually is connected to this uh, hole here. So yeah, the whole thing is a little crazy and you have to sort of rotate around in your head. But having said that, if we come in via the 1K resistor, that's equivalent to this bit up here, and then have a divider. I actually thought maybe I'd use something like uh, a 1206 for a cross here should fit. And then this little guy over here, that may be a 603, a little tiny guy here to go across here. That's the 10K and that's the pull down here that pulls down to ground. Uh, and then if I uh, position the SOT23 IC here, the, the transistor, uh, then we've got drain coming out to uh, here and that would be, I think, pin three. So you can see it here. Uh, 5 volt fan and to pin 3. Uh, source would be here, and if I rotate that around, that would be, uh, so it's coming down here, that's going to be pin 7. Uh, and then we've got uh, our gate uh, down here, which is pin uh, pin 5. Um, that doesn't sound right. Am I rotating that around right? Yes, I am. Uh, and so that is our gate here. And you can see gate has to be connected up to this uh, resistor divider here uh, and so there's another um, connection that's required between five and eight so that should do it all I need to do is to solder all these tiny tiny parts up and uh, and hopefully have something which will um, maybe switch on that fan uh, because the parts are so small I'm gonna have to try uh, an interesting soldering technique so here we go Yeah, that looks as though it has worked fine. Uh, we can get a little closer there to see the handiwork. I've also put some uh, 90 degree headers on there so I can actually connect it up. But to see whether it works or not, I think before I hook it up to the fan, uh, even though it's a cheapie, but just uh, maybe test the circuit with uh, an LED and we'll give it a signal which is pretty low down around, around the, uh, the one volt mark and see if that's enough to trigger the uh, the gate at the uh, uh, at the, for the A O three four zero zero and turn that five volt rail on. Hmm, interesting times ahead. Now there's my voltage divider, uh, one point one ish volts. Uh, so that's the signal I'm going to use. And uh, ooh, we'll pull this one out. That's no good. And we'll put in the one that we have soldered in. Uh, connect that up, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, there's the dead bug <laughs> hooked up. Uh, so hopefully that's okay. So we've got uh, ground to pin seven and we've got our uh, fan or LED uh, hooked up to pin three. And here's our signal. So at 1.1 volts, will it light? Let's have a look. Oop. <sighs> Not a great connection. I don't know if that's a, there we go. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably the breadboard. Yeah, it's certainly not a great light. Uh, let's check that voltage again. Maybe something has shifted and hooking all this up. So we've got, um, just need another couple of pairs of hands. Oh, there's 1.1. Okay, so it's just loose connections. Uh, nothing to panic about, 1.1 volts does seem to light it fine and uh, and so it should well you know I'm not sure what's coming out of the GPIOs of the OPI 3B but I'm pretty sure it's going to be more than 1.1 volts but it does prove that the old AO um, 3400 that's strapped in there uh, is actually doing its thing which is pretty amazing uh, <laughs> whether it'll handle 5.8 amps I don't know let's see if we can open that gate up a little further uh, if I just, yeah, look at that. Okay, so the brightness is changing as uh, as I'm just opening that up, that gate up a little bit. What voltage is that? 1.33. Uh, 
Yeah, so I think that'll be fine. 1.6, 1.7, 1.7, and it looks pretty bright to the naked eye. I'm not sure what you're seeing on the camera, um, but yeah, I think that's um, that's pretty good. So let's get the fan hooked onto it and see if we can't um, maybe uh, turn the fan on and off in response to, for example, temperature of the chip on the uh, OPI 3B. Now we have five volts coming in from the five volt rail. So hopefully with a little bit more oomph and then going down to pin number three of our transistor circuit. And pin number six now goes to pin number one of the transistor circuit and then everything drains out through pin seven, which is ground. So let's have a look at activating that fan. Yes, look at that. So that circuit is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So on and off. I wonder if we could also do some PWM at some stage. I don't think it's really necessary. This fan runs pretty silent and it, uh, it if it's only responding to excess temperature, I think that will be fine. Uh, so let's install it and uh, make sure everything still works. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty good result at this stage. So the OPI 3B is up and running. I've got one terminal here which is just monitoring all sorts of things, including the temperature up in the top right hand corner here, you can see the 33 degrees. And down here I've logged into it again. And what I want to do with that is see if this fan works. Uh, I mean, unfortunately I've had to sort of squish it all in. I'll probably reinstall this with some shortened leads. And I'm also just wondering about the orientation of the fan, which I'll talk about in a minute, but let's just see if the fan <laughs> works. Uh, when it's been squished in there. So uh, let's see, GPIO, I think it's mode for pin six should be out. And then GPIO, right, pin six, a one and enter. Yeah, nice, that's starting it up pretty well. And then a zero should stop it. And it does, yeah. So even though it's all squishy in there, it seems to be working pretty fine. The issue I have is that uh, it doesn't seem to be changing the temperature of the CPU an awful lot, um, which could be something to do with the, I don't know, the monitoring software, but it's more likely to be the fact that maybe uh, currently at the moment this fan blows up towards the camera. And I'm just wondering whether it might be better to have air coming in from the top and going down over those heat sinks. Uh, if you've come this far in the video, you're probably pretty invested, and I'd love to hear uh, your experiences with with this sort of thing. Um, I haven't looked it up at all, but uh, my feeling is that's probably upside down at the moment and should be blowing from the outside in directly over the top of uh, those uh, chips that are heating and also the heat sinks on top of them. So I'll do that. I'll change the fan around. I'll shorten the leads. Uh, if you're interested in how I do uh, turn the fan on and off, you know, all the code that's used to do that in response to temperature, I will link up the old video up in the corner here, and that's got the code on the blog. That is the circuit working for this week. Thanks for your company. See you next time.